Hey, Joe here. Talked in the last video about how to set up effects on the board so you can hear them. But now let's just go through. I want you to give you just a sample of what they sound like because there's some pretty, in the old studio lives, I didn't love the effects. They were okay. This one has actually a lot of options. And as of now, they're actually not even available in Studio One. So it's just on the board. So you might find some stuff you want to really use in your recordings or even maybe in your mixes if you want to run it through and record it back in. Either way, let's sample a few of the settings, shall we? So as I did in the last video, I've got Effect A set up with my vocal being sent to it. Right now it's muted so you can't hear it. So let's go in and just take a look at what we have available to us. So here are all our effects. If you, When you pull up Effect A, the first thing it does is it just shows you whatever is pulled up, whatever is it's set to currently. Then you tap on the name up here and you can use the little knob here to scroll through the different effects that you have available to you. So the first thing is the digital XL reverb. That's the one it defaults to. It's got a crazy sound. Like this is the van sound. Okay, it sounds like I'm singing in a van. I don't know why that's helpful. But then you've got a bunch of different effects underneath. Large room. Hello, large room. It's not that large. Make it bigger. Oh yeah. Nice, big, beefy room. Now one of the tricks that I'll do with a room like this, it's really big and beefy. It might be the right choice, but it's too muddy right now. What you can do is come over to your mixer, come back to our main mix, come over here, and we can look at our effects return. I've got it set up on this fader here. This is the return of A. So this is the sound coming out of that effect. And I can select it and put a put an EQ on there. So I've actually rolled off or used a low shelf to get rid of a lot of that extra low end that I don't want. <coughs> Excuse me. So now it's not as beefy as it was before and you can do as much of that as you want on these channels, which is pretty stinking cool. All right, so that's the digital XL reverb. Let's look at the next one, the PA-16. Now these are all modeled after fancy reverbs that I just don't know personally. I've seen them, but I don't know them. So this is the Rock Snare Hall. Sounds really good on this one. Yo, what's up? Rock snare drum sounding really good, oh yeah. Okay, so that's that one. And then we switch over to the 335 digital reverb, which I believe this one has a pretty sweet, um, let's see, pretty good concert hall sound. We can make it a little bigger if we want. Bigger. And then we come in here, there's a drum sound, a lot of different kind of lively sounds. Parking garage is always useful. I'm singing in a, oh, that's a lively studio. See, this screen's not super responsive. Parking garage. Where am I gonna park my car? Actually sounds pretty cool. It's super huge. And then you can save presets here, just like on the original. So you can quickly bump between them. I don't know how all that works because I don't use it all that much. What's next? Up next is vintage plate. I love a good plate. And this is just vintage plate by itself. Right now it sounds like a slapback delay. If we come in here and we can turn the reflections down, we can turn them up, turn the pre-delay down or up. We can figure out how much of the lows we're letting through. And then we can go for some presets. Does it sound like I expect it to sound? Long vocal plate. No, that's short. Come on. Presonus, I love you. This screen is not super great. But I guess you figured it out. A little bit longer. Not a huge plate, though. You can hear it a little bit, but it's not super. Hello. I'm not sure what these damp controls do anyway. So there's a reason I don't have that one. Mono delay. Everybody likes a good mono delay. This one's super, super fast right now. Two milliseconds. Two milliseconds. Bring, it Bring it out to 100. This, this is a good, good slapback slap delay. delay. I like to sing along with some slapback slap delay. delay. What's, What's great, great is you can roll off the lows and, and the highs. highs. So let's do that real quick. Roll off everything above like 3K. Roll off everything below 200 or so. Oh, that's for the feedback. Hang on. For the actual sound itself, we can do this and this. Now listen to it. This, this is a is really groovy, groovy sounding slapback slap back delay. delay. I, I love, love singing, singing along to this. this. Someone to blame. Someone to blame. When I know I want to put slapback delay on a mix, it's, I love having one right here that I can just pop on the vocal while I'm singing, and then I can add it later in the mix if I want to. Stereo delay, exact same thing, just left and right, so we can hear it in stereo. Again, Again. There, we go. there we go. Actually, has two, Actually delay has two delay times. 
Which is kind of trippy. Which is kind of trippy. trippy. Okay. okay. You can mess around with that. And then the final piece of the puzzle is the ping pong delay, which will allow you to have the delay go back and forth between two left and right. So right now, they all default to two milliseconds, which is totally not useful. But let's tap in a tempo. Someone to blame. Someone to blame. It's not doing it. I guess you have to cl- click that tap a sign. Boom. Someone, someone to, blame. to blame. Hey, someone, someone to, blame. to blame. Still sounds very, Still mono, sounds very to me. mono to me. Let's change the right. Change the right. A little bit. A little bit. A little bit. Still mono. Still mono. Hmm. Hmm. Well, it says stereo. It should be stereo, but it's not. It's probably something I've done wrong on my end. You know what? Let's figure it out on camera. Let's see. Let's go to our main mix. Effects return. Link? No? Okay, it took me a second to figure it out. It defaults to the width being zero. So I guess if you wanted just a, I don't know, a non-stereo stereo delay, I suppose you could have it. But if we do tap a sign and we tap in a tempo that we like... Now, if we go to stereo, it should be. It should be. Still not. Still not. Let's click that. Let's go over right. That, go right. There, we go. there we go. There's our ping pong. There's our, There's our ping, ping pong. pong. Not sure. Not it'd sure. be nice. It'd be nice if I could tap in a tempo, and then have these not be the same. Let's see. Someone to play. Yeah. Okay. So I'm tapping in the left one, and it's going in about 500 milliseconds. If I tap the right, that's weird. Now they're different. Now they're different. Now they're different. Now they're different. That's weird. That's weird. So maybe it's just a manual so maybe it's thing. Just, maybe it's just a manual thing. Just like, just like in just real life. life. In real life. In real life. <laughs> okay, that's insane. Anyway, that's fun. Have some fun playing around with these. I would probably honestly use the mono slapback delay, the stereo delay, maybe. Um, but I don't love the way it's working out, but it gives me some control, which is pretty cool. So I might actually have the stereo delay, and then just, if it's not super stereo, I think that would be fine with me, just to give me like a quarter note, half note delay, something like that, that I can easily tap in. And then maybe a big, long reverb with a tail, and then a shorter room reverb to have kind of both available. And then I just pop them on whichever I want for the given situation, and they're there and saved in the board, ready and waiting for me to use them. But it's pretty fun. Give yourself some time to mess around with these and see what they sound like. So when the session does come up, and you need to figure out what kind of sounds you're going to want to provide for the artist who's singing or playing or whatever's happening. You've got them there ready to go. They will love you for being able to do that. And by the way, being fast in the studio, I know it doesn't seem like it's that important, but it is. If a singer's in there and she's ready to crush it and she says, hey, can I have some reverb? I'm ready to go. And then it takes you a long time to set that up. It's just a bummer, right? So have it set up on your board and you say, she says, can I have some reverb? You say, oh, you want some reverb? Boom, one button, boom, one move of the fader, and we're done. She has reverb, let's go. That's what's cool about this board. All right, gotta go. See ya.